goes the dynamite. Alright, now we just gotta avoid the... <laughs> now we just have to avoid the acid when walking. Got it. Moving. I wonder, is Anna gonna be able to make it back in one phase? No, she's not. We'll have her take over there. And nobody else showed up, so this mission is practically over. Just, um, avoid the... Avoid the acid! I'd really rather not you get... I'd really rather you not get poisoned. Thank you! Oh my god! Thank you so much! Executed to the numbers, strike one. Get back here on the double. Alright, we are done! Awesome! Tutorial extraction mission successfully completed with no loss. However, somebody did get hurt a little bit. And now, one of the more annoying things about XCOM, but... That's how they intended it to be. Is the wounded system. Yeah, the wounded system. If a troop gets hurt in combat after a certain threshold, depending on how much health they have, I think, they get wounded for a different amount of days. It'll take them for, take for them to recover. Yeah, wounded six days. Ouch. However, everybody got a promotion. That's pretty nice. We have Corporal Jose Luis Rivera, so we get a, a choice of one of two different perks we can choose from. Bullet Swarm, firing the primary weapon as the first action no longer ends the turn, or Hollow Targeting. Shooting at or suppressing enemies also confers plus 10 aim to any allies' attacks on those enemies. I find Hollow Targeting really, really helpful. The other one actually has really good uses too, uh, but I just like Hollow Targeting. And for Corporal Assault skills, Aggression, plus 10% critical chance per enemy in sight. Tactical sense, plus 5 defense per enemy in sight. Max plus 20. Max plus 30%. Uh, brr, I actually don't know which I'd rather do. Hmm. Either one, there are benefits and drawbacks to it. Uh, I think I'll go for aggression. For you, at least. And Corporal Sniper abilities. Snapshot, removes the sniper rifle's restriction on firing and overwatch after moving. Any shots taken, however, suffer a minus 20 aim penalty. Or, Squad Sight. Allows firing at targets in any ally's sight radius. I. Love. Squad Sight. Snapshot is the ability I think I was talking about, if I mentioned it before, that allows you to shoot a sniper rifle after moving with a aim penalty. But I, I love Squad Sight. Squad Sight is just absolutely brilliant. And... Peng has become a support class, like I thought. Just like it sounds, the support class provides that intangible edge our squads need. They make everyone around them better. And she gets a smoke grenade. They deploy a smoke grenade once per mission, and the smoke can confer a plus 20 defense to all units and lasts throughout the enemy turn. However, enemies can also get that bonus if they step in the smoke. So don't throw it at enemies. Throw it at your own troops. Or don't let enemies walk into it. Because then it just gets harder to kill them. Uh, support troops only use assault rifles and pistols as well as, ex as explosives. They're also the best units to give um, medikits to. Because they get bonuses in terms of using medkits. Class assigned support. And 3312. And we get rewards. I love rewards. Remember, we will be watching. Duly noted, creepy counselor guy. Commander, good news. The council has donated a satellite. Our current satellite uplink facility can support up to two satellites, so I recommend we launch the new one immediately. Well, I can't argue that logic. Now we can finally launch a satellite over a country. Now you can see the benefits to putting satellites over countries. You can see with North America, there are three countries in North America. United States, Canada, and Mexico. In South America, we have Argentina and Brazil. Egypt, South Africa, and Nigeria in Africa. The United Kingdom, Russia, France, and Germany in Europe. And for Asia, China, Japan, India, and Australia. Since we did the counselor mission in Japan, their panic level reduced by one. China is still at three, however. But the country that gives us the most money in terms of 
uh, per month for satellite usage is the United States and Russia. 180 and uh, 150. Makes sense because technically they are the only two superpowers left. Or at least they were from the Cold War. So, money-wise, the United States is the best option. However, panic-wise, China is the better option. Uh, I don't know what to do. It's funny because on my last on my last game, I lost India as a funding nation, but they were the only nation I lost. I do not know what country to send it to. As you can see, uh, two, three, four satellites, you get extra stuff. And once you get... Uh, full coverage over a country, you get the bonus from them. So that's how you actually get the other bonuses, like air and space, we have ways, all in. We already have the bonus expert knowledge because our headquarters is located in Europe. And future combat from Asia. If a country withdraws from the project, we will lose any bonuses we had over that country if we had satellite coverage, or if we had full coverage over that continent, we will also lose the uh, full continent bonus. So like how I lost India, I was no longer able to acquire future combat. So there's that to worry about. I think, however, I'm going to, no, I don't know. You know, I'm gonna, cho I'm gonna choose the United States. I need, I need the money. I desperately need the money or wait, what do I get? I only get scientists from Europe. Uh, I only get engineers from Asia. I get both from um, from the North American continents. I only get one scientist from uh, one engineer. All right, yeah, it's going to the United States. Satellite uplink facilities at maximum. Capacity. And now, as you can see, we have no interceptors stationed in North America. So that's something we need to worry With about With this now. additional satellite in place, we've gained a significant upgrade to our overall coverage. I recommend we begin scanning for alien contacts right away. I don't. I recommend we do something. I, oh, the game's not going to let me. All right, fine. Be that way, game. Well, uh, in four days, our satellite will be operational over the United States. Hopefully, shortly, I'll be able to... Uh, oh! You're telling me that we should risk the lives of our troops so we can take one of these things alive? Yes. Without a live specimen, I'm afraid we've reached the pinnacle of what my team is able to accomplish. And how do you suggest we do this, Doctor? The autopsy I've just completed confirms that the alien's physiology is quite similar to our own. A highly concentrated electrical current delivered at close range should cause neuro- Close range? And what happens if it doesn't work? Do you really think this is worth the risk? I do. We do not know our enemy. How can we hope to stop something that we do not understand? If we can capture one of these creatures alive, we may be able to communicate with it. And interrogate it. Find out what they want. Where they're operating from. Yes. That possibility outweighs all risks, in my opinion. I can construct a safe enough facility to house our captive, but I do not know how we could possibly communicate with it. Not to worry. I will see to that. All right. I'll speak to the commander. Well, it looks like we're going to have a new objective soon. We have xenobiology. Let's uh, assign new research. We can now capture a live alien. Uh, read this if you want. Pause the video. If, uh, just pause the video if you want to read it. I'm just gonna skip through it, because it's a lot to read through. Commander, based on Dr. Valen's report, I recommend we begin researching the new weapon she's calling the Arc Thrower in the labs. Once completed, we can send the plans down to engineering for fabrication, and then equip one of our troops with it in the barracks. Dr. Shen and the engineering team are also waiting on approval for construction of the containment facility that we'll need in order to house the alien captive. Commander to New facility available! Commander alien containment! Alright, they want us in engineering, so let's go take care of that. Commander, 
No doubt you are aware of Dr. Valen's request to capture one of the aliens. A sound plan, but she fails to realize that we lack a facility to safely contain a live specimen. With your approval, my team and I will begin construction of a suitable facility. And now we can get into base construction. Expand the XCOM base by building new facilities. Here is the base layout. The officer training school. There is nothing there. A satellite uplink and an access lift. Uh, oh, we can't excavate anything for the tutorial. Uh, we can build it... Where do I want to build it? You know, I'll build it here. Alien containment priority. Required to build 5 power, which we have. The power uh, things right there, we have 25 out of 37. It means we're using 25 power out of a total 37 we have available to us. And it will also cost 85 credits. And it will take 7 days for it to be completed. So let's do that. Thank you, Commander. I'll let you know when the facility is ready. Dr. Valen has asked to see you, Commander. No doubt she wishes to explain her plan personally. Commander to the research labs. Commander? Commander, I'm sure you've been briefed on my request. With your authorization, we can begin research on the Ark Thrower immediately. Alright. Let us... Yeah, let's research the Ark Thrower. We can... Apparently, we can also research alien materials. Uh... That might not be a bad idea, actually. It'll only take three days to be finished. Commander to mission control. Commander to mission control. Alright, we'll take care of alien materials first. Commander, we're picking up widespread radio chatter indicating UFO sightings within our current satellite coverage area. We should begin scanning for contacts as soon as possible. Alright, Bradford, let's do that then. Let's scan for activity and we'll be able to pick up aliens only over Germany for now, but uh, oh, wait, no, never mind. We can uh, detect things in North America. Oh, which reminds me, this is what I wanted to do. Go to the hangar. We do not have any coverage here in North America. Not yet, at least. I will, however, order one interceptor and ah, uh, yes. The cost. We have to pay 40 credits for one interceptor to order it, and then it will cost 20 every month to maintain it. If we get air and space from the Americas, that'll it'll be reduced in half, which will be very helpful. Uh, I will order one interceptor for North America, and hopefully Commander to mission it'll get there very, very soon. Good, I think it did. And oh, uh, Carl Hansen has returned to active duty. Sweet! And there we go, we have now have alien materials researched. So let's go for the arc thrower. That'll take seven days. Do we have anything? Oh, read this if you want. Nanofiber vest is now available for manufacture. Made from a dense weave of nanotube fibers, this lightweight vest provides extra damage absorption to the wearer. Kind of helpful, and uh, oh, the, the scope. We already know about the scope. 